Hello everyone, welcome to The Inner World. This is a 2D point-and-click adventure game, and so far I've played it for all of maybe five minutes just to make sure everything works and to set the audio levels and all of that, and already I have fallen in love with it. In fact, I pretty much fell in love with this game before I even got into it, before I even bought it. I fell in love with it just from the description. So let me show you what I mean. Here's the story for the game. Robert is a novice, a bit clueless, but with a heart of gold. He lives a peaceful life as a court musician in Asposia's largest wind monastery. Contrary to the laws of physics, Asposia is an enormous hollow space surrounded by an infinite expanse of Earth. The world's air is provided through three wind fountains, but as one wind fountain after the other petered out and the wind gods came to Asposia, all of a sudden Robert found himself in the middle of a whirlwind. Together with the help of the mysterious thief Laura, his best intentions and no clue whatsoever, Robert sets off on his adventure to discover the secret of the wind's disappearance. Will a young adventurer be able to save his world? And what are Laura's secret intentions? That's the story for the game, but that wasn't all that was charming about the game. This, this game oozes charm from every pore. It's amazing. I went on to read the list of features, which normally is not a particularly interesting thing to read about a game. But the charm of this game actually extends to the list of features. It, here, let me read them to show you what I mean. Features, features, features. This is where the inner world shows what it means to be lavish, with tons of content waiting for you. Screamingly funny dialogues, numerous tricky puzzles. A handmade world fully drawn with love and devotion invites you to discover countless details, at least 325. A patented, multi-level hint system enables everyone to finish the game. A wonderful comforting atmosphere. Eye-pampering backgrounds in non-stereoscopic handmade 2D, going up against all other gr current graphic trends. Five spectacular chapters. A story with more twists than an Esposia knows. Stunning cartoon-like animations. The most epic soundtrack since the origin of Esposia, as well as professional voiceovers. Even a lip-sync. Lots of cutscenes. Optional hotspots. And of course, Robert. The very, 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 very last hope for Esposia. Just, just from reading that feature list... This game is amazing. And watching the trailer, too, the trailer is unbelievably charming. And then, well, just from that, I bought it. And now that I've played it a little bit, it, oh my god, you seriously, if you love adventure games, you are going to love this. I'm already in love with it, and I've only played it for all of five minutes. It's so good. It just, oh. It's the sort of adventure game I that sort of, if you, like, when you go to play it, it feels like you've entered a wonderful sort of warm inviting sort of atmosphere like everything about the game from the writing to the design to the voice acting just everything about it just feels like warm and inviting you know it's kind of hard to explain but it's just wonderful so yeah let's get into it the only other thing to say is that uh, this game is available from various places including the official site steam and gog.com links to all of that will be in the description to where you can find it for yourself and find out more information about the game and etc um, is there anything else to mention before I get going? I don't think so. I guess the only other thing to mention is that this game really surprised me. Its existence surprised me because I don't know where the hell it came from. I think it's made by a German company. That's all I know. I, I heard about, like, I heard about the game. And I thought, someone just mentioned, like, on Twitter, someone said, hey, this game's really good. I thought, wait, what? What is that game? Never heard of it. And then I looked it up and thought, oh my god, I need to have this. Like, it just came out of nowhere. Strange. It's strange when something so good just comes from absolutely nowhere, and I think it just makes me think, how did I miss this? Like, how did I not know this was being developed? I don't know. But here it is, and let's go. New game. Against all likelihood, there exists a universe consisting only of soil. Deep inside, lies a vast, spherical world. Its people call it Asposia. Air enters this world through the three holy wind fountains. To this day, the origin of the wind is widely disputed, but the fact that it is dying out little by little is undeniable. Without the wind, the light went out. Without the light, the warmth went away. And in the cold darkness, the wind gods came. They have been haunting the Asposians ever since with their petrifying stares. The only wind fountain still blowing is guarded by the Abbot Conroy. 
he has devoted his life to leading the Esposians through these dark, cold times. Every day, Conroy preaches of austerity and obedience, in hope that the wind gods will one day be appeased and the wind will return. He is often observed by his young apprentice, Robert, whom Conroy has raised like a son. Well, not like his own son, of course. allowed to take that. It belongs to Conroy. I abolish it every day for him. Pretty, isn't it? Oh, look what it can do. Conroy says it reminds him of the most beautiful day of his life. Of course, he's never told me what that means. But you know what I think? It has something to do with that. I bet you've seen a lot, hmm? Being a pigeon. You know, I've never been allowed to leave the palace <gasps> because of my strange holes. I wish I had stripes like everybody else. But look here. I knitted it myself so that no one will be afraid and of me. And if the Basilian's oh, turn is uh, a stone, uh, it's your uh, own fault. Oh, these ungrateful worms. I'm only trying to help them. <clears throat> oh. <sighs> Robert, my dear boy, play my song. <gasps> oh, Robert, how many times do I have to tell you? One note, one beat. Hmm? <laughs> No! <laughs> no! What idiot let that thing in here? Uh, don't worry. Pigeon, I trusted you. I'll save your pendant. Oh. No, Robert, boy, stay here. Guard, bring me the hedgehog. Oh, uh. I'll catch it. Kitty, kitty, kitty. That thieving pigeon. Okay, and here we go. Would you like an overview of the game controls? No thanks, I already know how to play. Access to tutorials at any time. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, I don't know if you noticed, but for some reason the audio seems to be out of sync with the video. I don't know why that is, it was not like that last time I played. It seems to, not only in the intro video, but also when I move? Let me test this. He's digging into the sacred earth. Catch that worm. Yeah, it's, it's out of sync everywhere for some reason, that's really strange. Okay, so I'm gonna fix that by restarting the game, so I'll be right back. Alright, I restarted the game and in fact actually restarted my computer to see if I can fix the audio sync issue, but it doesn't seem to have changed and I'm actually thinking maybe it's not actually an audio sync issue. Maybe it's just either because the game was I think originally in German and now it's been dubbed? Maybe it makes the uh, the, the lip syncing look weird? I don't know, I would think though that, think that the, the lip syncing would be automatically generated, right? So it should be good no matter what language you have it in? I can't imagine that they manually did the lip syncing for every single bit of dialogue, that would be insane. So I don't know, I'm confused. I swear it wasn't like this last time I played it to make sure the game worked, but I, I mean, there's nothing I can do. There's... It's a 2D game, so there's there's very few options. This is it. Nothing to set in the audio other than the levels. So... I don't know. I guess I'm going to just try to avoid looking at the mouths when they talk so that I don't go insane. I'm probably just seeing things and the audio sync is just fine, but... I think it might drive me crazy now. But anyway, yes, here's the game. And it is absolutely delightful. 
everything about it. The art style, this fascinating, strange world. The voice acting. The voice acting is so good. That guy looks like he'd rob me without hesitation. I should ask him if he'd help me. And this character, Robert, is just... God, he's an amazing character. Just, just strange and quirky and optimistic. I mean, just listen to that. That guy looks like he'd rob me without hesitation. I should ask him if he'd help me. What kind of a person says, I think that person would rob me? Let's go talk to him and ask him for help. <laughs> like, who would even make the connection between those two things? Yes, that sounds like a good idea, Robert. <laughs> oh, I love this game already. Alright, oh yeah, one of the things this game has, by the way, is a... I guess you can call, like a, call it like a variable level hint system. The only other game I know of that has a system like that was uh, is Cairo, where you don't get the full you don't get the full solution right away. You actually get different levels of it, where you can get like some very very small hints, and then the hints will get larger and larger depending on the more help you need. See, that's super super cool. I, I wish more games had that. It's such a good system. It just makes sense. All right, let's take a look. If you hold down the mouse button, you get a uh, you get a look at all the hot spots that you can click on. There's an old bottle in the garbage. Okay, well, for, well, first things first. I need to get to the pigeon. That thieving pigeon. Yeah, look at that. That is not in sync. You can hear it hitting it, but... It's happening at a totally different time. Why is the audio suddenly out of sync? That makes no sense at all. I haven't done anything different to my computer. Or the game settings. That's so weird. God, this might drive me insane. But what can I do? I mean, there's, uh, there's nothing I can do. I looked at the Steam forums. Don't mention anything about audio sync issues. So... I don't know. A nice... Oops. There's a fish on the windowsill. I wonder how it got up there. Good question. Does someone just throw an old fish up on the windowsill? That's kind of disgusting. You hear that, pigeon? I thought we were friends. You meanie. Alright, how am I going to get it down? Hmm. He's digging into the sacred earth. Catch that worm. Alright, let's get that worm. Slippery little... It's too fast. Of course, it couldn't possibly be that easy. Bottle. There's and it's an back up. bottle in the garbage. It's filled with fermented nocturine juice. How long has that been lying here for? <laughs> Smells like Tuesday. A year ago. <laughs> Smells like Tuesday. <sighs> I didn't know Tuesday had a smell. No, no, I, I know what he meant. It just sounded very strange. All right, well, it's fermented. So I could get something drunk, maybe? Pour it on the worm. I, how would that help? Hi, worm. You look thirsty. It... Oh, I'm actually doing that. <laughs> that actually worked. I just got the worm drunk. I, I was, that was a joke solution. I was doing it in the spirit of adventure games, you know, use everything on everything for no particular reason. And it actually worked. Well, I guess worms can't take much. Not surprising, they're quite small. Come here, the party's over. Now I have a drunken worm and a cork. Um... I could throw the drunken worm to the pigeon. No, now is no time to fool around. Okay, okay, okay. Conroy Head. Oh, I would recognize that smile anywhere. Conroy! Y you call that a smile? That looks like a scowl or a frown to me. Windsock. And a wind turbine. Hmm. A windsock blowing in the wind. 
The wind turbines in this town have become useless ever since the wind left. Oh, great! My own wind sock. Wind socks are awesome. <laughs> oh, I love the main character. He's so wonderful. No, it has to turn by itself. Well, it's actually turning a little bit, surprisingly. There's got to be some wind, I guess. I wonder why they searched the girl. She looks rather nice. I'm guessing that's Laura, the thief, right? The one mentioned in the story? Don't take down the posters. Okay, okay, fair enough. A phosphos. Conroy hates phosphoses. I like them. They glow. I like light. Oh, I just love Robert's, like, stream of consciousness random thoughts. I can't reach it. Hmm. Well, it could catch you with a windsock. That's just a random guess, isn't it? No, it, I think that's kind of reasonable. Catch it with the... Okay, I guess the windsock doesn't really catch things, but... So that's Conroy's garbage dump? What do we have here? An old vase, a spindle, the right hand of a guy from the city. Wait, a what? A scarf that I got him for his birthday. Hmm, that must have ended up here by accident. Sure it did, and did you just say the right hand of a guy from the city? Like, hand to hand? I don't want any of those things. Fair enough, I wouldn't want garbage either. But then again, here's a garbage dealer, so maybe I do. That guy looks like I should... Hello, can you help me? That depends on what you need. I don't have garbage. Garbage? Pardon? No, not me. Nobody's stealing garbage here. Especially not me. Well, I'm actually looking for... Do you need garbage? Click on a conversation topic to talk about it. Yep, yep, yep. Very nice dialogue system from what I've seen so far, by the way. It, um, it kind of avoids one of the major problems of adventure games where you don't... You know, sometimes you, like, want to do dialogue options over again? To see whether it leads to some solution or something like that, and you end up doing the same thing again and again, so you end up just, like, skipping through tons of dialogue and you keep hearing repetitions. But this is a nice system that grays out and basically tells you what's going to give you new information and what's not. So let's ask him about the pigeon. Can you help me? I have to catch that pigeon. Sorry, kid. If I leave my spot, everyone will steal my garbage. But who would... W I only see one potential suspect. Oh, I see how it is. Okay. What do you sell here? Well, I don't want to brag, but I have the best garbage in Asposha. You sell stinking garbage? Ah, I see. You're an expert. Since when are you into garbage? I've, um, always thrown it away so far. Well, then don't be shy. Go ahead and look around my little shop. Alright, he seems to be a connoisseur of garbage. And he also sells a sandwich? Wait a minute. Is that a, like a thrown away sandwich? This picture down here has flies around it. Ooh, bird feed. Well, <laughs> that would be the thing to get the pigeon, right? Letter. Wait, are you seriously selling the letter A? Um. <laughs> Why would I want the letter A? Is that an A? This? Do you maybe want to buy a letter? You can have it for a few aspirity. Why would I need one of those? What's your name, kid? Robert. Well, if you'd have an A, you could make it Roberta, for example, or Robert. The possibilities are endless. No thanks. I have a headache now. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Okay, what's up with that sandwich? What's that? This? An exquisite sandwich. It has only been eaten twice before. Um... Thanks. I'd rather not. You sure? I also have a half-full root milkshake to offer with it. A 
At least I'm pretty sure that it's a milkshake. Oh. No thanks. I've somehow lost my appetite. Who knows if I'll ever find it again. <laughs> that is disgusting. Okay, bird feet, that's obviously what I actually need. I'm guessing he's going to want to be paid for it though, since he has a shop after all, and I don't think I have any money. What's that? It's the best bird feet. I swear, no creature with wings can resist it. Great! That's exactly what I need. Can I have it? For a few Aspororo, it's yours. I, I'm sorry, what'd you say? Aspororo? Aspor as yeah, Aspororo. As oh god. How many rows are there? Aspororo. -ro -ro. Yeah. Aspororo. -ro -ro. <laughs> that is, um. Not very pleasant to say. Aspo ra ro re sounds great. What's that? That's the price for the bird feed. I see. And what does that mean? Okay, I get it. You want to negotiate. Do I? <laughs> what do you think of Asporora? Aspora? Are you trying to insult me? Okay. What do you think of Aspororo? And I'll even throw in this Conroy doll. He who works without a moan, the bazillions won't turn to stone. That's really kind of you, but I really don't need that. Do you have any idea what features this doll has? Conroy's help is good and fine, so be nice and wait in line. You get all that for us, Porora. That's as low as I'll go. But... Okay, Asporo, but really no lower. I have no idea what he's talking about. We're negotiating for different amounts of payment, but we're going from Aspororo to Aspororo to Aspororo? I, do, I don't even know what's happening. Either way, I don't think I have any of that. I don't have any Aspororai? Aspororo? I, <laughs> I don't even know now. I have no idea what you're talking about. Can't you just give me the bird feed? Okay, Aspiriri is fine. Pardon? Aspiri. Why are you yelling at me? <laughs> oh, jeez, okay. I'll give you the feed for Esps. Are you happy now? Um, I don't know. What? Okay, I'll give you the doll on top of that. Agreed? Just take it. Does this mean I can have the feed and the doll for free? Yes, I told you. How much more do you want to humiliate me? Thank you. You're very nice. And you are the most cunning, cold-hearted as potion I've ever had the displeasure to meet. Oh, I I'm very sorry for that. Thank you for the feed. Well, apparently complete ignorance is a very good negotiating tactic. I kind of feel bad for the garbage dealer now. Alright. Oh, I even have a Conroy puppet. The hell do I do with that? The original Conroy puppet for all his loyal fans. It talks when pressed. Hmm. He who works without a moan, the bazillions won't turn to stone. Great! The puppet even has Conroy's voice. Yes, his wonderful, soothing voice. He sounds like such a wonderful person. It's not like propaganda or anything like that, no. Okay, well, bird feed is the obvious thing, although something tells me it's not going to be that simple, but let's try it anyway. Hey, the bag is empty. What's the matter? Do you want your money back? Uh, I can keep the thread. Seriously? Oh, God. Um, hmm. I have a cork, a drunken worm, a windsock, a Conroy puppet, and some thread. What, what am I supposed to do with this? All right, let's look at the rest of the stuff in this environment. There's a crutch. Oh, a crutch. Whose crutch is this? Well, I don't know, but no one's using it. Well, if it's just lying here, I guess I can take it. Oh, now the crutch's tip broke off. I hope the crutch's owner doesn't come back. Although I'd be faster anyways. <laughs> the voice acting is so good, and the writing too, man. Oh, it's just this game is just wonderful. Alright, well, 
the broken crutch seems to have broken off in a very suspicious shape. Almost like a... Wow, I actually forgot the name. Uh, the thing you... Uh, what the, what is it called? Well, you put a... Like, rubber band thing between the two... I don't even know what it's called, I forgot. Anyway. Uh, well, thread isn't stretchy, that's not gonna work. No, the thread would just come undone. But... The worm might be stretchy. I guess he doesn't notice much anymore. <laughs> it worked. Slingshot, that's what it's called. Ah. I just made a worm slingshot. Oh my god, I feel really bad for the worm. Robert, please don't stretch him too far. Or he might snap. Oh, that... that. Mm. I hope he's really stretchy. I feel really, really bad if this kills him. Although, the fact that I just tied him tight means I've probably already killed him, to be honest. Okay, well, I could launch the cork, I suppose. As my projectile. Loaded slingshot. So, what should I shoot at first? Good question. You know, I can't imagine that a worm would be very flexible, very, very stringy, very rubber bandy, and I also can't imagine that a cork would be very aerodynamic. I don't think it would really work. But who cares? It doesn't matter. Alright, what am I going to shoot? Well... I don't want to shoot the pigeon. I think I should shoot the um, old fish because it's going for the fish. So if I knock it down, then it should come down here. So yeah, let's do that. Well, I only hope I won't hurt it. The fish, the fish is dead. Bingo! Well, worm, now you're free again. But I'll keep this cork. Okay, whew. The worm was apparently okay. Hello, pi oh. Oh, I see. Let me guess, you're gonna, yep. Hmm. Yeah, look at that audio, so out of sync, that is really weird. It was not like that last time I played. And as far as I know, nothing has changed in between those two times. I haven't installed any new drivers, haven't done a Windows update, haven't done anything. So strange. Ha! Huh. Now I have you right where I want you. Not exactly. I mean, the pigeon's right where I want it right now, but now I want to get close. I mean, I could try to grab it. I don't think it's going to work, though. Kitty, kitty, kitty. <laughs> no, I didn't think so. Oh my god, hopefully the fish didn't hurt itself falling. <laughs> Robert's worried about the dead fish and its feelings. It, Robert, it's dead. Oh my god, hopefully the fish didn't hurt itself falling. Alright, I guess I could try to catch it with a windsock, I suppose. Let's try that. Good idea. <laughs> Oh, that didn't work out. <laughs> okay, maybe... Uh, pigeon <laughs> pigeon Tunnel. Achievement unlocked. Maybe that wasn't the greatest of ideas, but you know what I can do? I can seal up the end with this thread. Although I might need a needle. If I tie the end of the windsock with thread... Oh, there we go. Oh yeah, yeah, that works. Net. I'll have a great net. Okay. You can't escape. You can't get out of this one. What do you think you're doing here, Bozo? I, uh... A little hint. You're about to steal my pigeon. Oh, yes, uh... What? I'm not stealing the pigeon. It stole from Conroy. Otherwise, I wouldn't have uh, stolen... Do you come here often? Whatever. Peck, come here. <laughs> Tell Conroy that from now on the winds are about to change. Ha! It was nice to meet you. Okay, keep calm. What would Conroy do? Oh no, he will kill me. 
I have to find that pigeon. And the girl too. Especially the girl. If I only knew her name. Laura. Wanted for theft, hostility towards the state of Asposia, assault, chewing gum in public, enraging the Brazilians. She has a beautiful smile. Alright, I did not expect to meet Laura so soon. Hmm. Tell Conroy the winds are going to change. So there's a bit of a plot afoot, huh? Well, I guess the uh, story did say she had secret intentions, right? Alright, I need to find her. I wonder though, could I use this windsock to catch the phosphos? If it's just lying here. Well, I could, but I won't. Okay, fair enough. I can't reach it. I know you can't reach it, but could you, like, talk to it? I don't know, they have mouths, and they look happy. Maybe they communicate? I can't... A phosphos. Conroy hates phosphoses. I like them. They glow. I like light. Me too, Robert. Me too. I don't think I can actually do anything with it yet. I could talk to it with the Conroy puppet. I don't see why that would do anything. No, now is no time to fool around. Okay, okay, let's go. To the street with bars. There's something else here, right? Let's look at the hot spots. Mm, nope, time to go. So that would be the thing, what was it, a badger or whatever? The thing that uh, Conroy sent after? The pigeon? This melody. It's familiar somehow. Hello. Hello, young man. I've never seen you here before. I'm new in town. Please. Who comes here voluntarily? Actually, I'm just looking for someone. I'm looking for Laura. Have you seen a girl passing by with a pigeon? Her name's Laura. The one from the posters? Yes, she just passed me. I have to find her. What a coincidence. I know where the young lady is hanging around. What? Really? Oh, perfect. You have to tell me. She's been stealing from Conroy. Poor Conroy. I don't even own anything worth stealing since my husband left me. I'm sorry. You don't have to be. He got turned into stone. <laughs> oh. Yes. At least you can rely on the Brazilians. Hmm. So, um... You know who she is? I can tell you a thing or two, my boy. But knowledge comes with a price, if you catch my drift. Uh-huh. You don't get it, do you? I'm afraid not. I would like to tell you. But worrying about my baby has made me forget everything. If my baby would be warm again, I could probably remember. That baby is adorable. Every single thing in this game is adorable. Look at all of this. Look at these phosphoses. They're all smiling. Look at them. Look at these, these little hanging ornamental things are smiling. The baby's smiling. Well, not in that picture, but in there. Look at the little baby smiling. Like, almost every single thing in the that has a face is smiling with that face. Oh, this game is just lovely. All right, tell me about this baby. How, how can I help you keep it warm? Your baby's cold, but it looks so happy. Yes, with a smile, it can better stand its destiny. Well, the cold, 
all the hunger, all the despair. Oh, I'm so sorry. How sorry? Uh, what? Well, I get sympathy every day for free. What I really need is something for my baby to wear. Oh, I understand, but now I really have to... Thank you. You're an angel. I had a onesie in mind. A what? A onesie. You know, footed pajamas made from strawberry yarn for my baby to wear. Footed pajamas made from strawberry yarn. Okay, I have no idea what that is, but I should be able to find some somewhere. But where do I get such a onesie for your baby? If I'd known that, I would have taken care of it myself, believe me. But I have to stay here and protect the few belongings I still have. And the baby, of course. Where should I start looking for something like that? You'll think of something. Oh, it really should be organic strawberry yarn. But isn't that the most expensive material in Asposia? The Wind Monk's fabric? The fabric of nobles? The baby insists on it. Oh, yes, of course. I guess then... You should start to look for it. Okay then, a onesie made from strawberry yarn. Organic strawberry yarn. Well, that's going to be interesting. Hmm. I think I'm going to have to steal it. Alright, well these dialogue options are not grayed out. Meaning they should actually be something new. But I wonder if they're just like hints. If I keep talking about the onesie. Can't it be any other material? If you want the poor thing to keep freezing, is that what you want? No. Then you better bring me the onesie. It's still not grayed out. Does it really have to be made from organic strawberry yarn? Does it really have to be made from organic strawberry yarn? Excuse me? I apologize, but it's hard for me to understand you over the baby's shivering. <laughs> I guess you could just... Well, I could just keep asking her about it more and more. Okay, let's, let's figure out where this goes. I still couldn't find a onesie for the baby. What do you want, then? Okay, so yeah, if you keep doing it, it ends up just being... Like, it, it ends up going nowhere. What's the baby's name? Conroy. Oh, that's great. You named it after the abbot. You never know. Maybe that calms the Brazilians. I think the name suits him. Thanks. It's a girl. Hmm. I wonder if you'd want the little Conroy doll. This song... It reminds me of something. Beautiful, isn't it? My dear mother used to sing it to me. Where did you learn the song you just sang? My mother taught it to me. Where did she learn it? From her mother. Ah, where did she learn it? <laughs> From her mother. I see. And where did she learn it? It was carried on the wind. Enough now. I love the dialogue in this game. Can't you just point in the direction she went? If you can obtain a onesie for my baby, I will bring you there personally. Okay, okay, let's go find a onesie. Although something tells me I'm not just going to, like, walk around the corner and find one in a dumpster. I have a feeling this is going to be an epic journey to find this onesie. Well then... Goodbye. Okay. If you're ever looking for me, you know where to find me. I won't go home, that's for sure. <laughs> okay. Alright, there are a lot of places to go and a lot of things to see. Basement... F basement window. I was gonna say basement fan. Is that a fan? It looks like a fan. Let's see what's in there. A pillow? 
Half a glass of pickles and a few nails. I wish I had such a nice room in the palace, but Conroy says wealth spoils character. Oh, does he? I'm, yeah, I'm sure he's not wealthy, right? With his robes living in his huge tower? What am I supposed to do with it? In order to break it, there'd have to be a pane of glass there. That is a good point. They seem to be posted everywhere here. Maybe I should write Pigeon Thief on it. <laughs> the Staggering Phosphos. Why is it staggering? I guess it's a drunk. I don't know. Wait, how can... Phosphos's float. How can something that floats stagger? I don't... Is that even possible? I don't think it's possible for something that floats to stagger. A Phosphos. They give off light and warmth. They don't eat, produce noise, or exhaust fumes. Practical. But they need wind in order to glow. Hmm. Well, they're already glowing quite a bit, so I guess more wind makes them glow even brighter. Well, they're freaking adorable. I want one. That's a smiling, floating, warmth and light producing creature. That's, that's wonderful. Today, jaw shatterer for Aspiri. This must be a dentist's office. Um, I... <laughs> Robert, I don't think it's a dentist's office. Ooh, he's got a little... Oh, is that actually a Phosphos? I was gonna say... I thought it was like a kite thing toy, but it's actually... His eyes are moving, I think it's actually alive. Hmm. Oh, the little boy's playing. I used to play Escape from the Palace. Conroy even played with me. I never won. Hi, little guy. Friend or enemy? Uh, friend? Hmm, I guess if you were an enemy, you would let me know. My name is Detza, gentleman, adventurer, and explorer of everything unknown. Name your request. Name my request. Um, tell me about the Phosphos you have. Is that your Phosphos? Yes, its name is Phos. I saved it. You did? How so? It was captured on Asposia's highest tower. Isn't Asposia's highest tower the lighthouse that doesn't shine anymore? Hmm. Yes, I remember Conroy telling me that the Phosphos there had been stolen from the tower. Not stolen. Freed. Oh. Liberated. He liberated a Phosphos and was creative enough to name it Phos. Okay, bonus points for... Being a rebel and freeing it, and minus points for being incredibly uncreative. Wouldn't it be easier to have another pet, like a tiny, soft tumble mouse? I used to have many tumble mice, but they always flew around all over the place. Oh, so they were blown away from you? They wanted to escape, but I stopped them. I see. And how did you do that? I stapled them to the ground. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so they stayed. Oh. <laughs> yes, I also used to have two spindle pillars. They always wanted to crawl away too. Ah. Uh -huh. So I stapled them. <laughs> oh. I also had a wooloo. Let me guess. Oh no. <laughs> but it didn't want to stay either. Please don't continue. Yes, mom told me to keep my hands off the animals. Yes. And off staples. <laughs> I can't imagine why your mom wouldn't want you to have any more animals. Oh my god. <laughs> the dialogue in this game is so good. Nowadays, Phosphos are rare animals. I know. That's why it was so hard to get this one here. I can keep talking about it for some reason. Hmm. Have you ever thought about adopting any pet other than a Phosphos? Like what? Well, maybe one that's, um, a little more 
durable, like a brick. <laughs> I think a brick would be a good fit for him because you can't staple a brick to the ground. Yep, yep, that would be a good fit. Pot. Oh, I just, I just now realized after seeing this dialogue option that he's wearing a pot on his head. Oh, what a nice pot. Did you just cut a pot? This helmet saved my life a million times. Like, like when I had to fight the root trolls. Uh-huh. How did you do that? Fire? Are you talking about that big fire two years ago? Otherwise, the root trolls would have destroyed all of Esposia. And the big flood extinguished the fire. You did that as well? If the question implies that I saved everybody's lives, the answer would be yes. Hmm. Okay. It's good that you have such a wild imagination. But don't you think your mum noticed her pot is missing? It's a helmet! It's made of steel aluminium! I still remember how I fought off the legendary Gorf army and how the Gorfs returned to the root forest. Does your mum know you're playing here all by yourself? Yeah, and she said if I wanted to, I'm even allowed to spend the night outside. That's, um, understandable. <laughs> yes, yes it is. Please, please feel free to play outside. Feel free to stay away at night. You know, feel, feel free to never come back. Is the pot, um, helmet bulletproofed? Unfortunately not. I tested it. How? I'm not allowed to talk about it until the trial. <clears throat> what kind of map is that? It's a treasure map. It will lead me to the Bazillion's treasure. That sounds awesome. Where is the treasure? It says it's somewhere in the root forest. Oh, in Asposia's most dangerous place? Nobody's ever returned alive from that forest. Yeah, I know. I was there once with a boy from the neighborhood hunting for gorfs. I tied him to a tree. He was never to be seen again. Oh. Yeah, but my mom said he's in a better place now. He seems to have a knack for tying things down. T tying people to trees or stapling things to the ground. He likes to keep things in one place. I want this treasure, though. Are you sure that this is a treasure map? It looks like a knitting pattern to me. Oh, come on! Do I look like I can't tell a treasure map from a knitting pattern? Yes. No, uh, yes. I mean, of course. But, but I think that... Listen, I will tell you what I've been trying to tell my mom. And the judge. And the uncle who wanted to discuss my dreams with me. If I tell you it's real, then it's real! Okay, okay, whatever you say. What is the Bazillion's treasure? The Bazillion's treasure is so secret that nobody knows what it looks like. But it's most likely in a treasure chest. And what did the Bazillions put into the chest? Their eyes! Oh, yuck. What would you do with them? I don't know. I guess... I will try to break them. Of course. When he's not sure what to do, he tries to break things that fits right in with his, uh, with his personality. Can I have a look at the treasure map? No, I want to find the bazillion's eyes. Why would you want to, f why, why would eyes even be a treasure and why would you want them? So you're looking for the bazillion's eyes? Yes. How many times do I have to tell you? If I'd had these stones, I could have turned Asposia's enemies into rock! Who are Asposia's enemies? Ha! It could potentially be anybody. Absolutely anyone. Well, that's it. Enjoy your game. What game? Okay. <laughs> Enjoy your knitting pattern there. Okay, so I need a bunch of stuff. I need the onesie, and I'm guessing I need some eyes. I can just tell him it's the treasure, maybe? I don't even know. Now, what is this? Petrified Esposion. Wait. That's actually a petrified Esposion? I thought it was like an art piece. 
I wonder what he's done to incur the Bazillion's wrath. Wait, when the wait, the Bazillions can turn people into stone? They can or petrify them? That's an interesting power. Better not. I might knock him over. Just remember the incident ten years ago. The scholars still call it Domino Day. <laughs> This was either caused by a bazillion attack, or someone built a house without a roof. Mm, they probably built it without a roof. Yeah, it looks like they were petrified right at the moment where they were... Like, right at the moment when the roof blew off or something. Although, for some reason, this explosion doesn't seem to care. They're all looking up. Those are screaming, but this one is just like, nope, don't care, just walking outside. Ooh, walking stick. Oh, but wouldn't it fall over? Oh, a walking stick. It's made of stone. Hmm. No wonder the old Esposian couldn't escape. I'd better take it before someone steals it. <laughs> what? I better take it before someone steals it? You, you just stole it yourself, Robert. <laughs> oh my god, I love Robert. Alright, what the heck am I going to do with a walking stick? That's quite a skinny walking stick. Hmm. Alright, should we head inside of the bar? Actually, what's in this door? It doesn't look very stable. Whoever lives here doesn't own anything worth locking away. Oh, is it even locked at all? Can I just go inside? This door belongs to someone. I think it'd be rude to take it with me. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Alright, what did he say was inside of the window? Let's see what's in there. A pillow? Half a glass of pickles? And a few nails? I wish I had such a nice but Conrad. Hmm, I don't... can't think of anything to do with that. Alright, let's go in the bar. Wow, this place is really colorful. I just love the art style of everything. Everything is just... I, I want to click on everything and I want to know what all of it does. Look, even... Even this spider in the corner is ridiculously cute. Look at that thing. It, its entire body is made of one gigantic eye. <laughs> and wow, there's a... They're using a petrified explosion as a coat hanger? Wow. No respect for the dead. <laughs> Wooloof. That thing also looks adorable. Wind monk. Guest. There's so much stuff to click on. Look at all of this. He seems to come here frequently. Actually, he never leaves. Oh, that would explain why I see him here all the time. Another sinner that the Bazillions have turned into stone. I wonder what he's done. Pillow. The, wait, that's a pillow? It looks like a box. What does it say? Content absolutely lethal. Served with a slice of lemon and a cocktail umbrella. Hmm, if, if it's lethal, then it wouldn't really matter what you serve it with, because it's going to kill you anyway. No, I won't drink anything with a skull on the label. I've made that mistake before. Have you? Yeah, that's a... Uh... Yeah, don't do that. It's, w it's wise to avoid that. That is by far the ugliest canary I've ever seen. What Dark. are you talking about, Robert? Cat. What game is this? Oh, honey. There's nothing ugly about that thing. That thing's adorable. Hey there, little guy. Can I pet you? He seems to be busy. Busy eating? Eating something. Some indeterminate brown sludge. Looks delicious. What's in there? Strange juice. Wow, that's the barmaid. She's really pretty. It's fascinating what time can do to a woman. That must be the barmaid. 
I've never seen such a female asposion before. Actually, I've never seen any female asposion in the monastery. Hello, are you the head of this establishment? I have no idea, sweetie, but I'm the owner of this bar. How about a jaw shatterer? A what? It's a liqueur, the specialty of the house. Thanks, but I'd rather not. Maybe a headcracker then? Or a lava streamer? All of that sounds rather violent. Violent? You probably mean easily flammable, sweetie. You look like you could use some more hair on your chest. Thank you so much. I will drink it later if I intend to uh, kill myself. <laughs> Let's talk about Wooloof. Oh, a small Wooloof. Yes, isn't he cute? I got him after my last husband left. He eats and sleeps the whole day, just like my husband used to. You can barely tell the difference between them. Your husband? Where did he go? He wanted to run away, but he didn't get far. What do you mean? He's right there. You can recognize him by his long nose and the coat hanger. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, he hasn't been the same since he got turned to stone. No, I, I think I'll find most people aren't the same when they get turned to stone, because they're not alive anymore. Other than that, though, everything's pretty much the same, you know? The man at the slot machine is a wind monk. Can you believe that? He's one of the great three. Him? That old pincer is a regular here. If you ask me, he's more of a great loser. But don't you feel honored that a real wind monk comes to your bar? As if I would need that. A monk in my bar. I was wondering why the Basilians haven't been in here yet. Should they? Are you a sinner? You know, sweetie, back in the day, men worshipped me. Believe it or not. Okay, then I don't believe it. <laughs> Is he really in here gambling every day? Oh, when that old moron lost his wind fountain, he became a gambler. You could never get him straightened out again. I'd bet my garter on that. <laughs> garter? What's a garter? Believe me, sweetie. If you get to see one, you're not going to be interested in what it's called. Why not? Oh, forget it. You'll figure it out. Figure what out? Maybe you won't. <laughs> Have you seen a girl with a pigeon? Her name's Laura. Oh, sweetie, I meet a ton of people here. Why are you looking for her? She has something that belongs to me. I can imagine that. I'm sorry, sweetheart. I can't help you with that. Oh, well. Bye. Take care, sweetie. I really want to pet that Wooloof. Bubblegum machine. There are a lot of colored balls in there. I get the feeling that they're looking at me. Hmm. Are they... like eyes, maybe? I need to insert a coin. Alright. So the bubblegum might be usable as eyes. And to get the bubblegum I need coins, and the only thing around here that has coins that I can think of is this gambling machine. Seems like he's here often. God, those Phosphosses are adorable. Look at that one, just, just hovering over a table. All right, there's a bunch of stuff I can click on. Let me see if I've missed anything. No, 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 no. Wait, no, what's this? Oh, is that the question mark? Something in the top left here. Looks like there's a hotspot in the top left of the screen. That's weird. All right, chair, monk. 
Gambling machine. Loose thread. That's what that is. Oh, that monk has really let himself go. There's a thread hanging from his robe. That would never happen to Conroy. Hmm. Lava streamer. Okay, so that's what she ended up giving me. The sight of it calms me. All right, let's talk to the monk. Wow, a real wind monk. What an honor. What is he doing? If I didn't know better, I'd say he's gambling and drinking alcohol. I would say you nailed it, Robert. Come on, come on. Oh, damn. Hello. Wow, you're Malleus, the wind monk of the valleys. Now, what the... Brazilians? Are you there? No, I'm afraid not. It's only me, Robert. I'm so glad to meet you personally. Okay. Is there a reason why you're disturbing me? Yes. I want to steal some of your coins. I, I mean, um... What are you doing? I'm, uh, meditating. <laughs> Looks like a lot of fun. Fun? If this was fun, it wouldn't have anything to do with religion. But what? I'm, um, uh, looking for inspiration. From a slot machine? Well, yes. Yes, well, until the inspiration finds me, it can't hurt to use the time practically. Right. That makes sense. Somehow. It makes no sense at all. But what does gambling have in common with inspiration? There are many ways of meditating. Just believe me, it will calm the Basilians. But Conroy is calming them. With meditation and discipline, I will... Are you still there? Yes. Where did I leave off? Oh, yes, I will wear this robe with dignity again. Bro, oh, damn it! That was all my money. Well, one last round. Yeah, I really want to know what the bazillions are. So how does that work with the inspiration? Your little brain wouldn't grasp it anyway. Yes, high score. Utterly another beer. Wow, that was really mean. But why do you believe that your gambling and beer drinking will calm the Brazilians? The Brazilians are puzzling. Now go away and let me drink. Ah, uh, meditate. Have you seen a girl with a pigeon? No. Oh. Are you talking about Laura? Yes, she visits me in the bar from time to time and brings me some root tea. Nice girl. Always realizes when she's disturbing. She stole from Conroy. That's an outrageous accusation. The poor thing has strayed from the right path. If she left the path, where can I find her? Rarely have I met such a non-spiritual root head like you. Non spiri what? Ah, forget it. Does that mean you know where she is? I just told you that she's left the right path. I don't know where she went. All right, all right. Okay, now I don't even feel bad about trying to steal his money, assuming that's what I actually do, which I suspect it is. Does Conroy know what you're doing here? Well, not exactly. It, um, would be nice if it stays that way, if you know what I mean. What should stay what way? Exactly. What? That's the spirit. What spirit? We understand each other. Understand what? Good. What's good? <laughs> the dialogue is so good in this game. Yeah, what, what do you mean? You mean... Conroy wouldn't approve of your meditation? I could ask Conroy if he would help. No, thanks. I don't want to waste his time. Conroy is busy calming the Brazilians. Yes, they become enraged pretty quickly. 
But if I would have known how hot-tempered they are, I would have chosen another job. Believe me. Hmm. Conroy's calming the Bazillions, and the Bazillions also seem to petrify sinners, so yeah, they seem very easily angered. Very temperamental, these Bazillions. Aren't you afraid that the Bazillions will turn you into stone? If they do, it probably means that I deserve it. I'm sure that it wasn't only your fault with the Bazillions. Of course it was my fault. I'm only waiting to find out what I've done wrong. Wow, what a way to live. Good. I I'll go now. One moment, one moment, only one more game. Yep, you're sure to win the next one. It's not like statistically you're going to lose in the long run. No, gambling machines are made so that you make money. They're gift-giving machines. They're charity. Let's see how that works. You insert money and pull the lever. And then again. And again. Yep, that's pretty much it. No, it's being used. And besides, I can't waste my time with gambling. I have to find the girl with the pigeon. Wait a minute. I just realized this loose thread. The the fabric, the, I don't remember what it's even called, but the fabric that I need for the onesie, isn't it supposed to be made from the most expensive thread in Asposia, which is worn by the wind monks? So I need to I need to pull enough thread to make Oh the knitting pattern. I need to grab enough thread from this wind monk and use the knitting pattern that the boy has outside to knit a onesie or something like that. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be interesting. How am I gonna do this? That swivel chair has seen better days. Hmm. Well, I could try to just pull it, but something tells me that's not going to work. Hmm. The chair seems to be rusted. How long has the monk been sitting here? What's going on? Nothing. Good thing he's so drunk it doesn't even seem to notice that I tried to grab onto his <laughs> a thread from his clothes. Alright, let's see if he wants a drink. Why should I do that? I don't know, make him so drunk he passes out? Give him a Conroy puppet. Well, I could, but I won't. Alright, alright, let's stick with stuff that makes sense, I guess. Which at the moment is basically nothing. It's completely rusted up. Alright, so I need to lubricate it so that he doesn't hear me when I try to grab the loose thread. Hmm, the chair seems to be rusted. How long has the monk been sitting? What is going on? Nothing. Would a lava streamer work as a lubricant? Is... Is it a good substitute for WD-40? That won't work. I didn't think so. Alright, I've got nothing. Hmm. Is there anything else in here I could use? Hello again. Sweetie, I knew you'd come back. How can Audley help you? Uh, apparently you can't. Bye. Take care, sweetie. Alright, let's see what else is out there. Alright, so I've gained a lava streamer, but what could I give that to? I don't know, but I can go to the Wind Fountain Square, so let's do that. Those are some massive arms. Hi, please don't grab me and strangle me to death against the bars. Oh my gosh, are those arms hanging out of the window? I hope the person belonging to those arms is still attached to them. Me too. I can't see any sort of a body, only the appendages. Hello up there. Can you hear me? Who's there? 
friend, enemy, fan? I believe friend. Oh, how nice to welcome a visitor. Um, a visitor? Who? Oh, you're in jail? Why are you in prison? Oh, that's a long story. I used to be one of Asposia's tailors, but the wind gods found my robes to be too... provocative. <laughs> they attacked the city and Conroy captured me for my own safety. Against my will. Hmm. Actually, the story's not that long. You have to be Asposia's best tailor. Oh, I'm only a small stitch in the unending scarf of history. A tailor, hmm. So let's see, to find out where Laura is, I need to make a... I forgot the name of the material again, but I need to make a... Out of a special material, I need to make a onesie. To get the special material, I need to pull out the thread of the monk. To get the thread of the monk, I think I need some sort of a lubricant for his chair so he doesn't hear me pulling the thread. I also need some coins for the gumball machine, possibly to get some eyes to convince the kid outside so I can get the stitching pattern, and then I guess I need to bring it to the tailor. Okay, I'm, con I'm, I'm stitching together, pardon the pun, a plan here. I don't know exactly what I need, I don't know exactly how to do it, but I'm pretty sure I know what I need to do, roughly. So you're a tailor? Oh, young friend, it's a lot more than a job. It's a calling. The needles are mental extensions of my arms. You have to become one with the fabric. The material has to flow through you. So, you're a tailor? Yes. You can't imagine how much I miss knitting. Well, it does seem like you've done a lot of knitting in your life to get arms those big. Oh my god. How do you... how... <laughs> Wouldn't your arms, like, get in the way? You try to walk through a doorway and you find out you can't because your arms are too freaking big, they won't even fit? Dear God, like, aren't they really heavy? If you miss knitting that much, I can help you. Yes. Can you get me out of here? Oh God, I've been waiting years for this moment. Hmm. Actually, I was hoping you could knit something for me. I mean, if you miss it that much, and all. Oh, yes, sure, that's also very... Mm, mm. What do you want me to knit for you? A onesie. Well, only if you want to. Oh, and then you get me out of here? I know. Conroy brought me here for... my own safety. But I'd rather be turned into stone than spend another day in this cell. Well, I guess I can see what I can do. Great, okay. Well, then I need a knitting pattern, needles, and, um, mm, what fabric are we looking for? Straw bear yarn would be best. Okay, well, I'm familiar with that. I used to have straw bear yarn when I was, well, free. But, but I really can't promise you anything. That's okay. This is the most hope I've had in years. That's, uh, um, really tragic. But back to the onesie. Feel free to ask whatever it is you want to know. Yes, just just keep your hope alive for all of the five minutes you will have it until you realize that I can't get him out of here. I can't. Although honestly, his arms look so big that I imagine he could probably just smash through the bars. Or maybe even the wall. Alright, well I know where to get the pattern and I know where to get the strawberry yarn. I don't know about the needles yet, but let's see, uh, let's get his thoughts on all of these anyway. The onesie should be made from strawberry yarn. Oh, oh, I remember that material well. I designed the three wind monks' fashionable robes. They were made from finest strawberry yarn. The material is extremely rare and very expensive. The baby insists on it. I guess I'll have to come up with something else. Where can I get a knitting pattern? Think of something. I suggest something to you. You take your time and get the pattern and I will... wait here. Do you really require needles to knit? Yes, 
Call me old-fashioned, but I can't knit without needles. <laughs> Call me old-fashioned. Um, I don't think there's anything old-fashioned about requiring tools to do a job that requires the tools. How would you knit without needles? How come you're a tailor? With those arms, you look like you could chuck an anvil. Oh, you sound like my dear parents. They always wanted me to become a bouncer. But I discovered my love for yarn early on. I used to crochet in secret under my blanket. <laughs> From there, it was only a matter of time until I worked with harder fabrics. At the age of 14, I started working with pillow lace. What could I say? My dad found out about my secret crocheting and threw me out. I spent several years on the street before a rich wool magnet picked me up. That's fascinating. Oh, I was a seamster like everybody else. The wool magnet discovered my talent and presented me to the right people and well, my career started. Wow, it's great how far you've come. Yes, and now I'm here. Yep, you went up and up and up. And then you went all the way down and ended up in jail. Well, it was good right before you went to jail, right? You must have seen a lot of things as a, a tailor. Oh, yes. I remember the big fashion shows, the stunning robes, the patterns. I was a trendsetter. I was an icon. All that's in here are rags in different shades of gray. Hideous. Okay, I'm, I'm going now. Oh. Okay, I'll stay here, yes. Okay, yes, you you stay there, okay? D don't go anywhere. So that's what I've been hearing. I've been hearing a guard eating a sandwich. Hmm. Oh, that's a wind fountain. Look at that. Uh, a dead one, of course. Since the wind has stopped. sin o -mat. Display. What the heck is that? Hmm. Alright, well, I'm actually going to end this episode here. Yeah, so far, just like I thought from the first... Like, five minutes of the game when I just started it up to make sure it worked. I was utterly taken in by this game. It is so charming and wonderful. And that has not changed. That has just been even more solidified in the hour or so that I've played. This game is just wonderful. The art, style, and fidelity is wonderful. The animations are great. The sound is really good in every way. The music, the sound effects, and the voice acting. The voice acting is really good. The writing is incredibly sharp. Very funny, very clever, just wonderful. The whole game is just so charming in such a, in such a, just glowing, warm way. It just, it feels like such a happy game, you know? It feels warm and inviting. Like, I just want to come back and just kind of like be in, like, it's playing the games like being enveloped in a wonderful warm blanket that just came out of the dryer or something like that, you know? It just has that wonderful feeling about it. Just almost everything about it is adorable. Which is not something I'm used to in games. Most of the games I play are relatively dark and serious. So it is nice to have something that's kind of a, a change of pace from that. So yeah, so far I absolutely love this game. I don't know what's up with the sync issue. It, there definitely is a, an audio sync issue. I'm almost certain of it. I mean, you saw the sound effects with the the pigeon pecking at the dead fish, it, that is not in sync, so I don't know what happened. Again, I'm... I only played it for like five minutes the first time I started it up to check everything. So I didn't get a good look at... Uh, you know, it's possible that I just didn't notice then, but I'm pretty sure the audio was in sync when I first played it. So I don't know what happened, I don't know why it's like this, I can't think of anything to change, I can't think of anything I've changed that could possibly have this effect. So I don't know what's up with it, but the audio sync is not bad enough to ruin the game. Like, I think I could live with it for the rest of the game if I have to. I don't know, I'll look up some... I'll, I'll go back to the Steam forums, I guess, and 
see if I can find anything? I don't know, I, I looked at the Steam forums and I didn't see a single person complaining about audio sync, so I don't know. Like, let's look at this sandwi sandwich. Sound. Come on, take a bite, take a bite. Take a bite. Yeah, even that's not in sync. It's definitely out of sync. And the bird flapping sound effect that he just made with his hands is definitely not in sync. So yeah, there is an audio sync issue. It's really weird. So I will see if I can fix it. But even if I can't, I can live with it. It's not that big of a deal. Alright, so I hope everyone has enjoyed so far, and I will definitely be back soon.